In this video, we're going to hang out for a bit while we take a look at how to look at raw data and convert it into something that makes a lot more sense. So we're going to take our raw data and put it in a format that we can make a chi-squared test, that we can make bar graphs. We'll be able to do a lot more data if we know how to organize it. So in this particular case, my student collected information about colleges. And so she's looking, she was interested in looking at college acceptance rates and uh, different international standards, like how, how many countries were represented at certain schools, what was the percentage of people who spoke another language, how many languages were offered, stuff like that. So in order to organize this, the first thing that she would have to do is ask herself, well, what is important to me? What am I actually trying to figure out here? And she's trying to figure out basically whether or not these international qualities of a school affect how competitive the school is or, or vice versa. If how competitive a school is affects how many international students or how many international qualities they have. So... I'm going to take her data and I'm going to focus on whether or not the number of countries represented affects the college per percentage acceptance rate. So very, very important column we have here is the percentage of students that were accepted. So I'm going to take it, I'm going to highlight it, I'm going to copy it just like you would a regular Word document or Excel document. And I'm going to paste it in another sheet, which seems here I already did, already did, but just so you see it happen again, there we go. All right. So since I'm going to be comparing it to the number of countries represented, I would take this, um, which is the number of countries represented, highlight that whole column. I would copy that column. And then I would paste it into another sheet, which I already did. But there we go again. Okay, so now we have the two things that we're going to compare, which are the percentage and the, the percentage acceptance rate and the number of countries represented. Now, in this case, we could totally go ahead and do a correlation test if we wanted to see exactly what the relationship between percentage and country represented is. However, if we wanted to take this and actually look at whether or not these two categories are dependent or independent of each other, you would want to categorize your data. So remember, it may, you may want to recall that if you're doing a chi-squared test, chi-squared tests are for categorical data. Categorical data doesn't really involve numbers. However, numbers can be converted to categories. What do I mean by that? Well, we have, let's say, 130 right here. That's a high number looking at all the other numbers that we see versus 27. That seems to be a low number. So we can make categories like high number of countries represented and low number of countries represented. We could also take the percentage acceptance rate and, and categorize it by how competitive the school is. So if you accept a lot of students, you're the most competitive school, for example. So if we categorize our values like that, we could have categories that look like this. High number of countries represented, low number of countries represented, re represented, most competitive, highly competitive, and very competitive. I got these three very similar looking categories from the internet from one of those catalogs that tell you what schools are. You know, the schools that are really, really hard to get into, they call most competitive. And the schools that are not so hard to get into, but you still have to really challenge yourself, they call it very competitive. So I'm going to use those categories and I'm going to figure things out. So in order to do this, I would like to figure out 
what's low, what's medium, what's high. Um, I could do that by looking at the data, by just scrolling and saying, oh, 44 looks somewhere in the middle here, and 25 looks kind of low, but 14 is even lower. I could go ahead and do that. But that might take a while, especially since we have so much data. So in order to avoid doing that, I can just type a few formulas in, which it seems I already did, but I'm going to delete that so you can see it happen again. Delete, delete, okay. So I'm going to type a few formulas in so we can see the minimum of each column, the maximum of each column, and the median of each column. So this step here, this is optional. Again, I personally just want to see how my data is spread out. Where is the top? Where is the bottom? Where is the middle? And then I'll categorize my data based on that knowledge. So in order to figure out the minimum, every formula starts with the equal sign. So I'm going to put equal min open parenthesis. Then I'm going to highlight the numbers that I want to figure out the minimum of, just the numbers. Then I close my parenthesis, as you can see up here, and I press enter. I'm going to do the same thing, but now to find the max. Equal max is the formula. Open my parenthesis. Now I'm going to highlight the numbers that I would like to find the maximum of. Then I'm going to, once I'm done with that, close my parenthesis, but still going. There we go. Close my parenthesis and press enter. And finally, I'd like to find the median. So the number right in the middle. And I'm going to highlight, same thing, just the numbers in that column, close and press enter. So now I can see where my minimum is, my maximum, and my middle, my median. So I want to do that for the other column as well. We don't have to retype the formulas. So I clicked in that box, then I'm going to hover to the right corner of the box, click and drag. And the formula is completed, the equation is completed for the other column as well. So that's the minimum over there. I'm going to do the same thing, click when I see the black cross and drag. Click in the box, hover when I see the black cross, click and drag. So now I have an idea of the spread of my data. So basically, what I see here for college acceptance, the lowest level college acceptance is 5.69% and the highest is, point, is 73%. Now, I noticed from my research in the internet that the most competitive schools have a cutoff of about 33%. So let's change the sheet and I'll show you what I found. So the most competitive schools accepts fewer than 33% of applicants, as you can see here. While the highly competitive ones accept between 33% and 50%. And the very competitive ones accept between 50 and 75%. I know I don't need more than that. I don't need to go to any less competitive schools because my students' data, as you can see here, the maximum number of, school, of, of students accepted was 73%, which means that she was only looking at these competitive schools. So those are the only categories I need for as far as how competitive the schools are. Most competitive, highly competitive, and very competitive. I did this using the internet, but you, you could decide based on however you feel to decide. Um, to You know, you could categorize it any way you want. You could say um, higher than 50% higher than is super competitive. You could call it whatever you want as long as you are creating a category and justifying your category. Now, I categorized my um, international representation, so the number of countries represented, I classified it in a different way. I chose to use my median. So my median for countries represented, represented was 81. And anything above that, so anything that any school that had 81 or more countries represented, I called that high international representation. 
and anything any school that had below 81 countries represented i called it low international representation but again this is really up to you to, to determine what you want to how you want to classify your categories so i chose to classify my categories in this way using those numbers once you have your classifications down you can go through and see what schools are in what categories. So for example, American University has an acceptance rate of 44%. As we can see here, 44% puts it in the highly competitive range. So we can change this if we want to highly competitive. And we can also see that the number of countries represented is 130, which puts it, of course, at a high international representation because it's above 81. So high international representation. Now, here's the thing. It would take a really, really long time if we were to go through and relabel everything in words. So we can come up with a little system where we can classify these things without retyping all of this information. So I'm going to highlight this yellow. And so from now on, yellow will represent highly competitive, high international representation. So this little box. Everything that will go into this little box, I am going to go through and highlight yellow. So for example, that was one. And then if we look at Boston College, that's another. And I'm gonna go through and highlight everything yellow that's in that category. And once I'm done with that, I'm gonna do another category and then another category until I get something that looks like this. So once I have this, so as you can see, we had our yellow American University or yellow Boston College and everything else in that category, I highlighted yellow, high and high. And so I went through and I noticed that I have one, two, three, George Washington, and four things highlighted yellow. So those four things are all in the same category. So over here, I put four because there are four highly competitive schools with high international representation. And I coded the whole thing in, this, in a similar way. The most competitive schools with a low international representation look like that in green and then I counted it and I got 15, so on and so forth. So it looks like we're almost ready for a chi-squared test. The only problem is, I just noticed that we have a couple really small numbers in here because um, there just weren't that many students, or schools, sorry, that, were, that had high international representation and were highly competitive. And there weren't that many schools that were very competitive with low international representation. And really, in our chi-squared test, we want all these values, ideally, to have five or more. So how can I fix this little problem? Well, to fix this problem, one way is to just consolidate the information. So instead of having this into two categories, I'm going to have high or very competitive schools together. So because there were eight highly competitive and one very competitive, I'm just going to add these two values together. So I'm kind of merging these two values so I can get rid of the second one. So we don't need that anymore. And I'm going to merge these two values together, the four and the two. And I will get six here. So we don't need that anymore. So now we have a beautiful little contingency table of observed values that we can, one, use to create a chi-square test, or two, use to create a bar graph. 
So I'm not going to do a chi-squared test in this video because that would take way too long. But just so you can see how a bar graph is done, because it's very quick, I'll just show you right now. Highlight the whole table. Click on charts. Click on column or bar graph, your preference. We want a clustered column graph. And now we have a beautiful table that, or sorry, a beautiful bar graph that tells us a lot of information. We see here that the low international representation is blue. The red is for high international representation. Our most competitive schools, as you can see, had higher international representation, while our low, or sorry, or while our not so competitive schools had a much higher low international representation. So you think about that. What what would what that would tell you, and you can totally go off on this and discuss it and do a chi squared test and. All kinds of lovely things can happen from this point on. Enjoy and good luck.